hello, I'm Maddie, and I want to show you something at the bottom of my garden. It's home to trillions upon trillions of tiny living things, most of which are so small we can't even see them. Any guesses? It's also got worms and a whole load of rotting veg inside it. That's right. Whoosh, poof, wow, amazing. Poof, it's my composter. Let's take a look inside. This is my compost bin, and it's a bit like having a factory at the bottom of the garden. Let me show you. In goes this, and out comes this. In goes this, and out comes this. If only it were that quick. We're gonna come back to this later, but first, I wanna show you something. This is my mini composter doing its composting thing here on the windowsill. All composters are brilliant, whether they're big or small, because they all help to reduce the amount of food waste that ends up in landfill. When our leftovers sit in landfill, they create harmful greenhouse gases like methane, and this contributes to global warming. But take a look, in here you might be able to see some food scraps and vegetable peelings. If we use a composter to break down, to decompose our garden and food waste at home, the amount of harmful greenhouse gases that go into the environment are reduced. So I'm gonna show you how to make your very own mini composter. Here's what you'll need. A tray or a dish, scissors, a pin, a used plastic bottle, green and brown waste, a spray water bottle, and some kitchen towel. Once you've peeled off the labels and washed your bottle, ask a grown-up to get the scissors and help you cut off the top of the bottle. When you've done that, you can get the pin and use the pin to make some drainage holes in the bottom. And now for the fun bit. Put your bottle inside some kind of shallow dish or tray and we're going to fill it with layers, starting with a layer of brown waste. This is brown waste. It includes things like ripped up newspaper, egg cartons, even crunchy old leaves. So, here we go. Brown waste first. There we are. That should do us. Now give it a spray with a little bit of water. We don't want it to be soggy, just damp. And now it's time for the next layer of green waste. Green waste includes things like vegetable peelings, food scraps, even grass clippings. So in we go. I've got some uh, carrot peelings in here, bits of watermelon rind, and the tops of some tomatoes, and green beans as well. And now for another layer of brown waste. Give it a spray. And you guessed it, a layer of green waste. You don't have to fill it to the top straight away. The idea is that you can add a little bit as the days go by. If you have any pets at home, you might want to use your lid of the bottle upside down to protect the mini composter. Just make sure you leave the bottle cap off so that air can still get inside. And that's about it. Super easy. A sunny windowsill is the perfect spot for your mini composter. Every day, give it a stir with a stick, and if it's looking dry, just give it another spritz of water. This one here has been sitting, decomposing for a few days already, and can you notice the difference? It's looking really damp, the vegetable peelings are a bit slimy, and there are even some juices running out the bottom. But what's going on inside a composter, and how can this help our food cycle? I've come back outside because I want to show you this. It's my thermal imaging camera and it lets us see the temperature of things, how hot or cold something is. Now, when we talk about decomposition, something decomposing, we're talking about it rotting, about it breaking down, and temperature plays a really important part in that. If we look at the compost bin through the thermal imaging camera, what can you see? Notice how the bushes around the compost bin are blue. That means they are much cooler than the bin, which looks bright yellow. That means it's pretty warm. See that red spot right at the base? That's where it's the warmest. Let's see what it looks like inside the bin. 
Here we go. So the contents of the bin, that's the grass clippings, vegetables, old brown waste. That looks yellow and even has little spots of red, which means it's much warmer than the sides of the compost bin, which look blue. One of the reasons it's warmer inside the bin is because it's made of a thick, dark plastic, which holds in heat really well. But there is something else going on too. Inside this compost bin, there are a countless number of tiny living things we can't see. We call them microorganisms, like fungi and bacteria. These microorganisms help to break down the waste into smaller pieces. They use it for energy and the whole process generates heat. As the temperature inside the compost bin goes up, the microorganisms become even more active. So the decomposition rate goes up too, meaning the waste starts to rot down much more quickly. Too hot though, and the microorganisms die off. Too cold, and the process slows right down. It's the same reason we put some food in the fridge, because it slows down the decomposition. It stops it rotting so quickly. So it's a little bit like Goldilocks in here. You don't want the temperature to be too hot or too cold. It's got to be just right. And this is what we're left with. Compost, an amazing rich fertilizer that is packed with nutrients. But we do have to be patient because the process takes a long time, a very long time. But when this is ready, we can use it to help us grow new plants and the whole cycle starts again. Aha, look who has come to say hello. It's a little worm. When the conditions inside the compost bin are just right, other helpful insects like this ant and this worm will also help to break down the waste inside. Our mini compost to make was inspired by a story all about worms from my book, Stuff. Let's take a sneak peek. Worm tea, it's not what you might think. Vermicomposting is a special type of composting where worms are the stars of the show. A big tub called a worm bin is filled with all of your unwanted kitchen waste and, you guessed it, worms. Loads of them. These helpful little wrigglers soon transform your old fruit and veg into nutrient-rich compost and worm poo, which growing plants love. A tub at the bottom of the worm bin collects the juices from the decomposing waste and this is called worm tea. We don't need worms inside our mini composters, so if you do find any in the garden, best keep them there. It does mean we're not getting worm tea, but we do have compost tea. See those juices? I can put those on the house plants and they are going to absolutely love it. The final touch on our new mini composter is to put some kitchen towel over the top to help keep it nice and damp inside. And now we wait for this to turn into compost. This could take a while. If you want to find out more about worms and composting, then check out my book, Stuff. But as always, stay curious and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.